Hello, Yu-Gi-Oh! players, and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! and Business Casual. I'm your host, the RJB Zero. Today, we are going to talk about Stun. What is Stun? Well, Stun is a primary win condition, or secondary strategy, which seeks to win the game by stopping your opponent from completing plays and limiting further plays. What is the difference between Stun and Control? Well, a Control deck will first off allow plays to complete to a certain extent, but will focus more on keeping your opponent's plays from having a an impact on your field or on your ability to play, make your plays, and then progressively control the field through cards during your turn, through your own effect removal, etc., 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 whereas a stun deck will act more reactively during your opponent's turn to try and limit their plays and to put a stop to the ones that you allow to be put on the board. A uh, typical stun deck will run a very large trap count and will contain mostly cards which create removal or stop plays during your opponent's turn and also create blanket limits on your opponent's plays. Chances are that if you are a stun player, um, you really like long games. You think that the grind game is the essence of Yu-Gi-Oh! and it is the best part when you and your opponent are duking it out card for card. Chances are you are also kind of frustrated by aggro decks because no matter what you do, they seem to have another monster to put on the board uh, to try and bust through your defenses, and they wear you out of resources real quickly. Whereas a control deck is very predictable, they operate at a steady pace that is very easy to pick apart. So what uh, does a stun main win condition look like? Well, typically, a primary stun win condition uses um, a very large monster with a powerful stunning effect um, that is also very difficult to get rid of, um, and a set of back row that can back it up and keep your opponent from removing it in other ways. Typically, that is a um, that is a stun formula. You see this in most of the most famous stun decks of all time. First of all, you've got Dino Rabbit, probably the most successful stun deck in a long time. Um, Dino Rabbit would dominate the game by first putting out an Evelzar Logia or Evelzar Dolka, which is a large attack pointed monster that has a powerful stun effect. It's very difficult to get rid of, rid of based both on its own effect and on merit of the fact that you are just running tons and tons of back row. One of the most terrifying statements in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! for a long time was Logia Set 4. Um, people would start off a game like that, and then they would win by forcing the opponent to play just enough of their strategy to waste some resources before they wreck that strategy and run you down with the Logia. They would wear down the resources very, very quickly. Um, another example of a more recent stun-based strategy is Constellar. Constellar has a very stun-based strategy, and a lot of people don't realize this. The goal is to either put an Omega or a Pleiades on the board, depending on what deck you are playing against, and you combo that with the cards in your back row in order to keep your opponent from completing plays that would take out your board or would give them some progressive action toward their own plays. Another deck that's also been very popular recently that has follows a very stun strategy is Evil Swarms, uh, kind of the partner of, um, of Constellars, which says that I want to put an Ophion on the board very, very quickly um, and protect it with back row in order to stop the opponent from making large monsters. If the opponent isn't going to be making large monsters, um, you will use the high attack of Ophion and the large amounts of back row, including, um, including effect negation, including monster destruction and removal, in order to make sure that you keep the biggest board out the entire time. Um, another way that Evil Swarms often keep a stun-style dominance on the de on the game is through cards like Deck Devastation Virus and Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Now, this leads me into talking about why stun cards and stun strategies are probably the most common ones in the game, even though stun decks themselves are the rarest decks in the game. The reason why stun cards are so popular is because they stop specific strategies. Most side deck cards in the world follow a stun-based strategy, even down to the extra mystical space typhoons which stop decks from fire, like Firefist uh, from completing their tanky plays. 
Um, frequently, people will run things like Macrocosmos, Vanity's Emptiness, Soul Drain, um, DNA Surgery, Light Imprisoning Mirror, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, Effect Veiler. Those are all side cards with a stun-based condition um, or strategy to stop the opponent from making specific plays. So stun strategies are actually the most popular in the game because they are run in every single side deck in the game. Um, so there, aside from having prominent stun win condition decks, there are also a lot of decks that run stun secondary strategies. Um, the most famous of which is probably Dark World. Um, and the reason why I say that is because Dark World has probably the biggest stun-based secondary strategy. I'll tell you what a stun-based stra secondary strategy often looks like. Stun-based secondary strategies usually include a parameter that you can put on the board in order to limit your opponent's ability to react to the plays that you've already made. Um, an example of that, once again, Dark Worlds. Dark Worlds, um, their main strategy is to put lots of graphas on the board. Put graph on the board, beat the opponent down. If graph gets removed, put another graph on the board, or put multiple graphas on the board. It's a very heavy aggro strategy, but to stop the opponent from reacting properly to that play, a Dark World player will almost always run things like Skill Drain, Deck Devastation Virus, Eradicator Epidemic Virus, and another thing that people don't look at as far as stun goes is cards that remove cards from your opponent's hand, and that is another thing that Dark Worlds are really good at. They put that drag down onto the board, look at the opponent's hand, take out the card that they don't want them to have, and allow them to draw a new card. When your opponent adds a card to their hand, just hit that Mind Crush button and take it out before it can be a problem. So Dark World has a very, very prominent um, stun-based secondary strategy. Another deck that has a very prominent stun-based secondary strategy um, is Infernity. Infernity has one of the most powerful stun-based secondary strategy because they can just cough up an entire set of stun back row um, from their deck in order to block the opponent's plays in the form of Infernity Barrier and Infernity Break. Another popular stun-based secondary strategy, though it isn't as obvious, it's still very powerful, is in Spellbooks, since they have the secondary strategy both by using Vanity's Emptiness and through things like Kaiku and Jaugen the Spiritualist, and of course Spellbook of Fate to stop the opponent from completing plays. So that's what stun looks like. Are you a stun player? Let me know down below. And then, of course, subscribe for more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Meanwhile, thank you guys for watching Yu-Gi-Oh! and Business Casual. I'm your host, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See you guys.